Hi everyone, I'm Tim and uh, we've got a very special solar stories for you today. Uh, this is my father-in-law Keith. Uh, so Keith is actually one of the first people I know who got solar installed uh, a long time ago now um, and uh, this was uh, right at the beginning of, of when feed-in tariffs were, were a thing. We're going to cover all of that in this uh, in this little chat. Um, so uh, yeah, without further ado, let's let's get chatting about your, your solar array. Can you tell me about uh, the orientation and the size of your array, number of panels and that sort of thing? Yep, we have 19 panels uh, totaling just over three and a half kilowatts right. in two strings of nine and ten. Excellent, right. Um, orientation is southwest, so not perfect, but pretty good. That's good, yeah. And there's very little shade, or well, certainly is now. There used to be a very large tree um, outside our garden, and you could see a dip every day in the graph right. uh, until that was uh, taken down a few years ago okay. and now we get a perfectly smooth graph oh, on really nice. good yeah. days all right okay cool um so yeah we, we spoke about the, the feeding tariff mm. um, how long ago was it that you got your array installed installed in january 2011 right um, yeah. so we're now in our 13th year um at the time uh, the feeding tariff was at the uh, the maximum that uh, mm. uh, you could get, which was 41.3p. Goodness, per kilowatt per, hour. Per unit generated. Per unit generated. Yes. That's, so that's not the what you export, that's everything yeah. that you generate. Everything generated, yeah. 41.3. Uh, export tariff was 3p. Right. And uh, because we don't have a smart meter, uh, there's an assumption that we will uh, put half of what we generate back into the grid. So we're paid 3p for half of what we generate. So that's what they call, is that deemed export? Is that yes, the deemed export, yeah, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, I think that's quite a common thing um, at, at the time, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't think smart meters were really very common at all at the time. Oh, I don't think they were. Uh, I've had quite a lot of aggro recently from my uh, supplier wanting me to have a smart meter installed. Uh, and I particularly don't want to have one because I know that I use far more than 50% of, of what I generate right. in the house. And therefore, if I had a smart meter, I'd get paid less. So they would actually take the export from the smart meter. They don't they don't leave you on the deemed export. I believe they would swap me to right. uh, the okay. real figure if I that, had a smart meter. That's interesting. Like that, It seems to me that they, they shouldn't penalise you for having a smart meter. Because like, there's so many benefits to having a smart meter. That yes. It seems daft, but anyway, I guess that's... Yes. Just one of those things. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so can you tell me what sort of inverter you've got uh, attached to your, your system? The inverter is a Sunny Boy 4000 TL. Right. And I believe the 4000 refers to the maximum um, array size that it will cope right. with. So four, four, kilowatts. four kilowatts, yeah. Because yeah. I believe that was the maximum array that you could have at the time for the right. season tariff. Yeah, so I think, because nowadays you um, you have uh, different applications you can make to your distribution network operator. So a G98 is sort of the common one where you don't really need permission to put the array on. Mm -hmm. um, and that limits you to 3.68 kilowatts. Okay. So that would have been probably quite, that would have been basically, I think that's, that's mm. the same situation back, back then. And it's yes. just a case of, uh, you can put that on more or less any house. Yeah. Whereas our system, we have um, we have six point eight kilowatts, but the inverter is five kilowatts, and in uh, because that's above the three point six eight. Yeah. Kilowatts we had to get a G ninety nine approval. Okay. Which is so that yeah, it's all it's all a bit complicated. So I'm not maybe maybe that wasn't really a, a thing that you could do back then, or maybe, maybe it was. I and don't it's just remember something... any references to G ninety eight, G ninety nine, or no. anything like that. I know we. Uh, there were quite a lot of form filling and yeah. backwards and forwards with the uh, with Eon, uh, who we have our supply from, uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it all worked smoothly. It was just that most of it, of course, was done by uh, by post at the time. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing was accepted by email <laughs> twelve no. years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, we didn't really uh, get involved with the, the the DNO application at all. Mm. Our installer did all that for us, which was mm. nice. Um, yeah. and we just, you know, we just said put as many panels mm. as you can on the roof and. Mm. And all that. So, well, one yeah. one uh, amusing aspect is that we actually ordered an array of eighteen panels, right. and when they arrived, um, uh, and I believe the panels come in packs of twenty. Okay. From the manufacturer Ying Li. Right. Uh, they so they had some spare ones, and they decided to rearrange the panels um, because they said they couldn't do what had been designed. Okay. But the new design had one extra panel. Oh, right. Oh, that's handy. Well, well, there you go. Why not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. 
Um, so we spoke a little bit about the feed-in tariff, um, and you said that it was, how much did you say originally? 41.3. So has that changed over time? That figure is now 68.3 That's ridiculous. per unit, <laughs> and will continue to go up uh, by some inflationary measure Goodness until me. the end of the 25 years, for which it's guaranteed. 25 years? 25 years, yes. Yeah. So do you mind me asking how much your the whole system cost when you got it installed? The system as a whole was 15350 Okay. And uh, one small additional cost, we needed a new fuse box. Right, got you. Which yeah. was 350 I oh, believe. Right, yeah. I haven't included that in any of my no, own calculations no. about yeah. costs, but it was a, an interesting little extra. So since you've had it installed, has, has the installation cost been paid off? in that time it, it has uh, we are now running at about 128 percent of what oh, we exactly. paid yeah. um with obviously the expectation that over the remainder of the 25 years that, that will you grow have, to you have a comfortable 250 percent goodness yeah so was the decision to get the solar ins installed was that a financial decision or were there environmental con considerations on your part what were your what were your motivations i was aware of the way the environmental considerations were going yeah. at the time yeah. and keeping an eye on developments. But I think it's fair to say that had we not been able to get the feed-in tariff, then we wouldn't have done it because it wouldn't have made financial no, sense. That, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, And this, as I understand it, is, is because you need to incentivise early adopters Absolutely. in order yeah. to build up the industry. Well, ex yes, exactly. I think that's so, the whole point of, it, of the feed-in tariff, wasn't it, to, yes. to do that. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. Like for us... I think your did, was it. It was about eight or nine years, was it, that it took to pay pay off um, based on your feed-in tariff earnings? Uh, y yes, it, uh, it was. Yes, I think yeah. um, the estimates given by the company who installed the panels uh, would have provided a payback period of about eleven years, and right. it was, a, was, it was a quicker, somewhat somewhat less that. than that. Yeah, so that is. I, 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 what I find interesting is that that's still about the same for us. I think we're we're expecting um, the payback to be somewhere in the seven or eight year mm. region, yeah. but that's now in, having included a battery as well. Mm. Um, but obviously, we don't have the feed-in tariff. We're mm. we're just using uh, it'll be you know savings from not having to import, mm. but also um, with tariffs like um, like the flux tariff that we're on the octopus flux tariff, we actually get quite a good. Uh, export rate yep. uh, for that um, in the winter we're I'm I'm going to switch away to um, to the go tariff which is a sort of uh, an EV tariff where we we can fill our batteries overnight yep. using very cheap electricity and that will help provide um, power during the day yep. when there's not a lot of solar being generated so we're con going to continue to save money in that way because of the battery yes um, so yeah that combination of the solar and the battery will will help. Uh, provide greater savings than just the solar array on its own because you don't have a battery, I assume. We have no battery. Yeah. Um, at the time, I don't think the industry was, no, was mature enough no, exactly. to provide yeah. one. Yeah. And we've thought about it since. Um, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I quite like the idea. Yeah. Um, so, would that affect your feeding tariff at all by adding a, a home storage battery at your way? I I wouldn't have thought it would, but I, I haven't investigated. Yeah. Um, well, if anyone in the in the comments knows the answer to this, this would be really useful, actually. So. Uh, yeah. And the same thing, presumably, for adding more panels, whether yeah. that would affect what, what I get on. I think I, the way I understand it, I might mm. be completely wrong, so please correct mm. me if, if, if I'm wrong here, but I think if you add a second array, mm. that wouldn't uh, be subject to your feed-in tariff, but mm. it would allow you, you could still, you could export. Yeah virus uh, you know a smart meter yeah uh, so that would then i guess be a, 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 a calculation you'd have to make whether um the adjustment for uh exporting less than you mm. than the deemed export mm. um but you'd also then be able to export more with your new array at yes. much higher rates because your yes. deemed export is only you said three pence or something uh yes that's gone up to um i've got the figure here somewhere uh no, I can't find it, but it's it, it will have gone up by perhaps 50%. So right. It'll be 4.8p, something right. like that. Right, okay. So for reference, mm. um, uh, the, the the export rate I, I, I've been getting over the summer, um, during the day, it's the best part of 20 pence. Mm. And at, uh, um, between 4 and 7 p.m., it was 30 pence. Mm -hmm. So, that you know, you could argue that yep. getting a second array, switching out to a smart meter, 
losing a little bit from your deemed mm. export, but then gaining loads more from you know a proper export tariff yes. that, that's available nowadays actually yes. might be worthwhile. So yeah, um, but, we do have a certain amount of space uh, that we could potentially use on, on the same roof. Mm. Uh, we left space for um, solar thermal. Right. Yeah. Originally, yeah. Um, that n never seemed worthwhile enough to pursue. So I could now use that space for a second for a, solar. Array. Yeah, and of course panels are significantly more efficient now. So you yes. could get an array of half the number of panels, but and effectively double your generation. I yes. think yeah, more or less. Yeah. So you've got yeah. you said um, nine, did you 19. say nineteen panels mm. um, just shy of four kilowatts? Yes. Three point something. Did you three say? and a half? Yes. Oh, three and a half kilowatts. Um, so yeah, four. We've got uh, two nine-panel arrays, and each of which is three point four kilowatts. Yes. So, um, yeah, there you go. Half the number of panels, <laughs> yeah. same amount of generation. Yeah. So it's amazing that yeah. the panels have come along. You know, they've effectively doubled in efficiency in in eleven or twelve years. Well, so it's mad, isn't and it? I suppose the investment in in, in technology yeah. will generate those sort of improvements. Yeah. Yes. I, I was um, watching a, a video the other day, and I think the theoretical limit of of solar silicon solar mm -hmm. as it stands is somewhere around 40 percent but it's like to get to that point um would require a you know a great deal of uh, uh of further advancements but um yeah. uh yeah it'd be yeah. interesting to see how far we can we can get yeah that. yeah uh, there's one more um financial aspect um which i tend to ignore in most most of my calculations um uh, and that is the energy that we use from the panels in the house right oh okay um, so, so actually, obviously we're not uh, that's not generating money for us but it is saving us money because ah, we're so, not buying electricity from so, the grid yes of course so in actual fact your pay your payback as it were yes was probably quite quite a lot quicker than i reckon some time ago that that was adding about uh, a half a percent to my annual yield of seven to eight percent all right okay cool yeah that's amazing right so uh yeah that's that, that's that's most of the sort of technical uh, questions i think um but yeah one 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 question i had that i was curious about was um i i've noticed when i've been here before that i don't think you have bird protection on your panels no so um was that even discussed when you when you got it installed not discussed um have you ever no. had any problems with with we, pigeons or anything we have noticed a couple sheltering underneath them have they ever, have they ever <laughs> built nests or anything like that no we've got no had no nests underneath uh, we've never had them cleaned oh right um yeah. Yeah. never had an issue at all um and i suppose if there were an issue with, with them needing to be cleaned you would notice that in the perform performance right yeah so have you noticed the performance change at all over the no, 11 or 12 I'm, years i'm a bit of a spreadsheet um <laughs> person so uh I, aren't, we, I do aren't, aren't we all <laughs> well, so, I, so i do monitor that uh, uh, very regularly uh, the performance um particularly what i do is uh, look at the peak performance that they have generated. The absolute maximum kilowatts that you get. Yes, uh, at any point in time yeah. um, on a month-to-month -month basis. Right. So yeah. I have 13 figures for January from 2011 to 2013, uh, yes, showing okay. me the peak performance in each of those 13 yeah. um, Januarys. And then so February. I can tell what whether there's been any regular degradation for the same month in each year. Yes, okay. And uh, there hasn't. Um, I think uh, for five months there's been a slight decrease. For three months it's been the same. And for four months there's been a slight increase. Right. So clearly the panels are not worsening their performance yeah, at that's, all. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also note, although this more, may be more to do with uh, 2022 being a, a particularly hot year, um, and 2023 pretty good as well, uh, that four of my highest 10 ever readings have been in the last two years wow okay that's yeah and also that uh on four days over the 13 years the system has produced more than uh the theoretical maximum right yeah but, uh, yeah, but yeah. i did also notice um so the, the the maximum figure i've ever had is about three percent above the system's theoretical yeah capacity and I looked back at the technical specification for the panels themselves, and they say that they are uh, manufactured with a 3% tolerance. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So, so there, some of the panels had, will be more and some will be less. Well, and, maybe, yeah. but I have had right at the top end of the of the tolerance 3% more than they so, should be able to produce. So you had a lucky batch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, so that's really interesting. So you've not really, there's no, no maintenance at all has been no, required or anything like that. And your inverter's still going strong after 11 or 12 years. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, I have been told, I think, 
subsequently rather than as outset that they may have a theoretical life of 10 years yeah that's um, it we yeah. wouldn't probably need to replace it at some point mm. which is one reason for monitoring the performance um of everything to 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 see whether any of the components do need changing and no the inverter appears to be perfectly fine that's brilliant yeah yeah i think you commonly nowadays get a five-year or maybe a 10-year warranty on inverters so mm -hmm. um yeah i would certainly have expected to to have replaced it by now but yeah, yeah. You've, you've done well there mm -hmm. um so have you, have you uh so we, we spoke about batteries uh, uh um, are you considering at all getting um, any other equipment like um, a heat pump installed for your your house, or are you still sticking with the with the gas boiler? I I suspect that we probably won't get round to um, a heat pump, um, uh, partly on on grounds of um, uh, inertia and other priorities. Yeah. Um, uh, I also wonder to what extent it might be less effective with an older build house. This house was built in the early 1980s, mm -hmm. um, and I think that needs to be taken into account. Mm. But before I, I uh, went into that in, in any level of detail, I would be more interested in uh, battery storage in particular. Yes, I think you. I think that would be the first thing um, to try. Yeah, yeah. Another solar array, maybe, and uh, when our car needs replacing. An electric car. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I mean, we've certainly very much enjoyed our one, and yeah, uh, yeah we'll yeah. we're, we're going to hope to give uh, give uh, give our my in laws' cat's parents um, a little demo of our car at some point, maybe this weekend, uh, trying to convince them yeah. that, that uh, it's the next yeah. the next thing they should okay. do. But, well, I think range um, anxiety has gone away, but I do still have a little bit of anxiety about the network of chargers. That's yeah, um, where getting... one can access them. It's getting better all the time, actually, yes. and and, on, and we the vast majority of the charging we do is at home anyway. Yes. So, um, um, but yeah, that's uh, we have I have a video on the channel for those people who are <laughs> who are keen to see how charging on the public network uh, uh, went for us for the first time we tried it. Yes. Um, so uh, yeah, no, that's fascinating. Well, thank you very much for uh, for telling us your story. Um, I'm uh, I, you know part of the reason that I wanted to get solar because I saw I saw Keith's system. Uh, many many years ago when you got it installed and I've, I've wanted one ever since so uh, uh, yeah it's been great to chat with you and um, we're going to enjoy the rest of the weekend Cat's off uh, with with her mum getting her giant uh, cross stitch framed so um, that's why we thought we'd take this opportunity to have a, have a little chat while they're out of the house but yeah thank you very much for, for joining me okay, Keith you're and welcome. Uh, it's been a pleasure okay bye everyone and thanks for watching bye see you in the next one <laughs>